Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this uh, lecture in organometallic chemistry. In our previous lecture, we have looked into an important concept which is sigma donation and pi back donation that occurs between the ligand and the metal in organometallic compounds and that results uh, in a unique kind of reactivity for these transition metal compounds. These transition metal organometallic compounds that show a variety of reactions which are unique to them and we are at a point where we are trying to understand uh, why does it happen or why is it so. And what we saw that it is the partial occupancy of their valence orbital which can lead to their acceptance of electrons or as well as back donation of electrons leading to this unique sense of reactivity. And hence, uh, uh, we came into a very important rule which is called 18 valence electron rule. This is a rule sort of used for guiding uh, the stability of transition metal organometallic comp complexes and that is often used as a definition of a stable organometallic transition metal organometallic compounds. And later we came to know that there are a wide large number of transition metal organometallic compounds which may obey this 18 valence electron rule as well as some may violate the same. And in this lecture we try to understand the reason for compounds uh, for doing so. And our approach in this discussion would be at looking at closely at this 18 valence electron rule and also try to uh, look at the metal ligand interaction from a molecular orbital standpoint trying to see how does the metal orbitals really interact with the ligand orbitals in manifesting uh, uh, in their valence uh, reactivity. So, with this we are going to start today's lecture on 18 valence electron rule and it is and the classification of uh, organometallic compounds. Now, usually it is said that thermodynamically stable transition metal complexes has 18 uh, valence electrons. Stable transition metal complexes has 18 electron in valence shell. These complexes attain their 18 electron after combining the with ligands ligands and these 18 electrons are housed in five d orbitals, one s orbital and three p orbital. Overall this leads to nine orbitals having 18 valence electrons. Indeed 18 valence electron compounds are extremely stable and uh, uh, they uh, 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 and uh, they are sort of inner towards many reactivity. With that in mind let us look at a very stable compound which is ferrocene. is a stable compound. It is often referred to as dicyclopentadienyl iodine.
and it, it should have 18 valence electrons in his outer orbital. So, this leads to very important aspect of counting electron count or counting valence electrons. Electron counting is an important concept or important uh, way of ascertaining the uh, stability of complexes and we should know how one ca count its valent electrons. There are two methods, one is uh, ionic method of counting valence electron and the other one is a neutral method. In ionic method it is defined, uh, it is thought that this this cyclopentad ionyl iron is in, uh, composed of two kinds of interaction where you have two cyclopentad ionyl anion each having 6 electrons. So, giving to 12 electron interacting with a iron 2 plus which is 6 electron leading to a total of 18 electron. Now, the other way of counting this is by the neutral method. In the neutral method, this 2 cyclopentadienyl ring is thought of as a 2 cyclopentadienyl radical and they would bring about 10 valence electron and iron is taken to be iron 0, hence 8 electron and that gives a total of 18 electron. So, what is noteworthy over here that immaterial of the method of counting the total valence electron they sort of match independent of which method is used for counting the electrons. But one must be aware that if one uses ionic method they should use ionic method all the way through or if one uses neutral method they should use as neutral method all the way through, but they cannot uh, halfway uh, use a ionic method and then a neutral method and arrive at a right answer. So, you have to adapt to one formalism either the ionic method or a neutral method in counting electrons. As far as I am concerned I find neutral method to be a more convenient to use, but that was that is simply just my personal uh, uh, preference. So, let us take a look at few other examples. Here is dodeca -mangan uh, carbonyl -mangan uh, manganese. So, we have Mn2 CO 10. The structure of this compound is with each manganese having 5 carbonyls and there is a 1 manganese manganese bond. So, in neutral method five carbonyl will give ten electron, manganese zero seven electron, one manganese manganese bond giving one electron and total of eighteen electron. So, so this obeys eighteen electron count. Similarly, if we take uh, diiron nonacarbonyl, the formula is and the structure of this compound is
So, what we have here is 2 iron atoms, 3 carbonyls which are at the side, these are called terminal carbonyls and 3 bridging carbonyls, these are called bridging carbonyls. So, again let us do the counting by neutral method. Three carbonyls, terminal carbonyls, six electrons, three bridging carbonyls, three electrons, Fe zero, eight electron, Fe Fe. 1 electron, this gives a total of 18 electron per iron center. So, what we see is that ligands contribute differently as they bind. For example, when the CO is terminal like situation like this, they contribute 2 electrons, 3 of them providing 6 electron and when CO is bridging as in the case over here, they provides a single electron. So, depending on how carbonyl binds to the metal, the, uh, the number of electron it donates to the metal changes. Now, that bring backs to an important topic of ligand classifications. So, how does ligands classify in transition metal uh, organometallic chemistry? So, one thing uh, one needs to know that certain ligands can have both neutral, positive and negative charges and they may contribute uh, electrons accordingly. For example, if we have metal alkyl when the ligand is alkyl, aryl, halide, you know or in the neutral form it contributes 1 electron, in the positive form they do not really bind and in the negative anion form it contributes 2 electrons. Let us say if we look at other ligands for example, olefins, carbon monoxide, phosphines in the neutral form they provide 2 electrons they do not bind in the cationic and the anionic form. If there are ligands like pi allyl type, NO, then in the neutral form they provide 3 electrons, in the positive form 2 electrons, in the negative form 4 electrons. So, this is an unique ligand which binds to the metal not only as a neutral entity, a positive entity and or a negative entity and provide different electrons. If there is diolefin, then in the neutral form it provides 4 electron. There are several examples of this and I am going to just take some few representative anions. Let us say we have cyclopentadienyl then in the neutral form 5 electrons and in the negative form 6 electrons. Let us go to an extreme example of cyclooctatetraene.
which is C8 H8 or C8 H8 2 minus. So, in the neutral form it provides 8 electron in anionic form it provides 10 electron. Now, let us look at the different electron donating abilities of these ligands that bind to transition metal. So, what we see these ligands they pro can provide electrons all the way from 1 to 8 or even 2 to 10. So, that is a huge diversity in terms of the ligand being able to provide electrons to the metal. And also another important thing is that the ligand not only bind in the neutral or the negative state, but it also binds in a positive state or can bind in a positive state to the metal. Now, that is very counterintuitive because metal itself usually are cationic in nature. So, a cationic metal uh, interacting with cationic uh, ligand is something which one would not uh, initially sort of uh, uh, think right about. So, it is counterintuitive, but we have ligands in organometallic chemistry that can bind to the metal in all forms of states and that is why it gives rise to some very important piece of uh, uh, chemistry. Now, let us take a look at uh, the class various classes of transition metal organometallic compounds and these transition metal organometallic compounds are of three classes. Class 1 has a 18 electron rule not obeyed. That means, they have valence electrons from 16, 17, 18, 19 and more. Now, we have class 2 where 18 valence electron rule not exceeded. And then their valence electron can have all numbers till up to 18. And last type are the class 3 types which obey 18 valence electron rule. and they have only 18 valence electrons. So, what we see this is class 2 where 18 valence electron rules are not exceeded in their valence orbitals they have electron they can have electrons which is 18 as well as they may have a number which is even lower than 18 like 16, 17, 18. Now, we have class 3 uh, which has 18 valence electron rule obeyed this for this class of compounds and they have exactly 18 uh, electrons in the valence shell. What is noteworthy is that our initial uh, belief of 18 valence electron being the governing rule for transition metal organometallic chemistry is only one type of uh, subset of the complexes that of total realm of organometallic compounds. There are two other classes equally existent equally varied. Uh, by their own right and merit uh, beyond uh, the 18 valence electron rules and these were classes 2 and classes 1. Now, let us take a look at trying to understand how this classification or happen or what is the molecular level interaction happening between the metal and the ligand in forming this class 1, class 2, class 3 type complexes. So, in class 1 what we know that 18 electron rule is not valid. So, what is important to us is, is in trying to understand that how this 18 electron rule is not valid, but the compound can still uh, be formed and compound can still exist. So, let us take a look at the uh, interaction between ligand and metal for class 1 type of complexes in 
uh, in the in these uh, transition metal organometallic compounds. So, for class 1, let us say we have metal orbital and we have uh, now for the metal orbital there are let us say n minus 1 d levels d orbitals and this is the energy. So, there are 5 d orbitals. Now, above d will be the n s orbital and above s there will be 3 n p orbital. Now, these 9 orbital 5 plus 1 plus 3 would interact with ligand orbitals let us assume that these ligand orbitals are all sigma interacting that means that these ligand orbitals will point towards the metal orbital along the uh, along the axis internuclear axis and let us take a look at the uh, simple uh, octahedral complexes where we are looking at metal uh, L6 octahedral kind of uh, inter, uh, uh, interaction. So, in such scenario there would be 6 ligand orbitals interacting with the sigma ligand orbitals. interacting with this 9 uh, metal orbitals. Now, of these if there are six sigma orbital then the ligand orbital should interact with only 6 of the 9 metal orbitals. So, that means, 3 of the 9 metal orbitals would not be interacting with this six sigma orbital. So, these 3 orbitals which do not interact are, uh, are the ones which are are not along the internuclear uh, axis, but they are in between in the axis and these are d x, d y and d z. So, 3 of these 6 orbitals would sort of not interact with this 6 of the ligand, water, uh, ligand orbitals and these are d x y, d y z, d z x. So, they sort of stay as non bonding. So, that leaves us with 3 2 of the uh, 2 of the d orbital, 1 of the s and uh, 3 of the p orbitals interacting with the 6 of the ligand orbitals. So, this they would interact 2 of these one of that and three of that interact would give six bonding orbitals. And these are called A 1 G E G T 1 U and these 3 d x y d y z d z x which does not interact are called t 2 g orbitals. Now, the way there are 6 bonding orbitals formed that would result in 6 anti bonding orbitals, 2 of the anti bonding would be from the d type and these would be a the E g star. So, E g is over here the bonding one the anti bonding is the E g star 
then the NS will give one orbital which is a uh, anti bonding orbital called A 1 G star. And lastly, three of the p orbitals would interact to give three sigma antibonding p orbitals called T 1 u star. Now, what we see over here is that T 2 g is non bonding, this is non bonding and E g star uh, is the empty anti bonding or lowest empty anti bonding orbital. Now, looking at this one can arrive at the uh, conditions for which the type 1 uh, would be valid and this difference in the energy is called delta 0 or the splitting energy. So, it says for class 1 type of complexes delta 0 splitting is small and T 2 g T 2 g e is non bonding can be occupied 0 to 6 electron and third E g star weakly anti bonding and can be occupied 0. So, what it says that electrons can be over here, over here as well as over there. Now, if all of it is full, then how total we would get about 12 plus 6 18 plus 4 22 electrons. And if these are empty and these are full, then we should get about 20 12 6 into 2. So, overall what it means that for class 1 complexes there can be 12 to 22 valence electrons. And hence what we see that this explains why that uh, class 1 type do not obey 18 valence electron rule. And for class 1 type there can be a valid 22 valence electron compound and still be stable. So, with that I will conclude today's lecture. What is interesting about today's lecture is we have deconstructed a molecular orbital correlation diagram looking at the orbital interaction of a metal center with that of a ligand center, how they come along and how they interact, how, can, how they give rise to the bonding and anti bonding orbitals and how the bonding and anti bonding orbitals explain the total valence electron count and the stability of these complexes. So, we are going through a very exciting uh, series of concepts uh, we are developing and in the next uh, lecture what we are going to look in more detail about co construction of molecular orbital diagrams for the class 2 and class 3 types of complexes and understand how uh, uh, they result in stability. So, with that uh, 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 I thank you for being uh, uh, with me in this class. And I look forward to uh, being with you in the next class where we take a much deeper look at this molecular orbital interaction for class 2 and class 3 type of complexes. I hope to look, uh, look forward to being with you in the next class. Till then, good, goodbye and thank you.